Zooming in on me. Not sure about this camera. Okay, folks. Um, technologically, really struggling today. Uh, one of my cables failed, so the camera that I was going to have over the bench. Uh, that I'm going to be working on, and this bloody camera is going to do nothing but track my face. Um, yeah, the the move really messed me up. Um, so today is going to be uh, a quick update. Uh, I'm going to tell you what I planned on doing today, uh, and um, for the sake of um, respecting your time. Because of the way this camera is acting and the fact that my cable failed for the other camera and you're not going to be able to see what I'm doing over the bench, I'm going to make this brief. Um, so I'm going to give you a real quick update. What's going on in the bindery? Uh, what you can expect in the coming weeks? Uh, where I'm at mentally? Be care. Uh, yeah, and we'll go from there. So um, if you've been following me along the last few weeks, we've been releasing... Um, the live demonstrations that folks have paid for on the website here on Patreon for the bookbinder and the book artist tier. Uh, those are the top two tiers. The bottom tier didn't get it, and it's not available to the general public like this particular video is. Um, tomorrow, we're going to be releasing the the full uh, demonstration of, what did we just do last Saturday? It was the uh, secret Belgian binding, the crisscross binding. And then I've got a couple of them here. Um, so this was the crisscross binding that we did. Um, now this isn't sewn in, um, so you can kind of see what's going on on the inside. I have not put the thread protectors at the sewing stations yet. Um, or the paste down. That's why these are not sewn together. Uh, these are uh, books that I make for, for sale on the website and markets and that. Um, so we're going to release the full, almost three hour long video of the process of making those books. Uh, we discuss the tools, vocabulary. Uh, we discuss the, uh, the modern accepted version. We discuss the and Goy version, which is the Goy and Goy, uh, which is actually the one that we make uh, in the video. So tomorrow's atle is going to be the secret Belgian crisscross binding, and we we make an entire book from start to finish. Um, so it's quite the process. Uh, next week, uh, this Saturday, I uh, I'm supposed to have a class, but I'm going to cancel it. Uh, for these technological reasons. I can't have a class with a camera moving around like that. It would drive me nuts. Uh, so I'm going <laughs> to reschedule the class yet again. I think this is going to be the third time I've pushed this particular demonstration out. I feel guilty, but it was a free class. And I had like 70 people sign up for the free class and only one or two people pay up, uh, sign up for the paid classes. So I'm not going to sweat it. I'll get over it. Um, I will do the class. It is uh, the demonstration is on the uh, the undervalued pathlet stitch, and this this lecture is pretty much what it's going to be. Because I mean, doing a pamphlet stitch, we can do it in about 15, 20 minutes. I can show you the variations: three hole, four hole, five hole, six hole, uh, through the spine and you know through the edge. Uh, but most of it is going to be discussing the rich history and how it ties into the French and the American Revolution, religion, social, political aspects, uh, the pamphleteers that um, peddle these things uh, and its social implications and its relationship to modern day social media like Twitter. Uh, yeah, I refuse to call it X. Um, I think that was probably one of the most boneheaded 
marketing ploys ever. Um, but you know, that's my custom cat. That's not a scratch and whoops. Cat keeps trying to use my uh, my speaker monitors as scratching posts, and um, yeah, I'm not thrilled about that. All right, so I'm going to push that one out, and then the following week we're going to be doing Japanese stand binding. I'll cover the four major, uh, or at least the four common sewing patterns, and a little bit of the history, and yeah, we'll go from there. So uh, a lot of good stuff coming up, um, almost weekly. Uh, then, of course, I have the live sessions. I'm going to order a new cable. Uh, I, I might be able to order it this week. I'll probably order it next week, so it'll be here for the week after that. So the live session next week will be like this. I'm just going to talk to you and give you updates um, until I get that cable. And hopefully the cable comes before the other class. I'll have to push it out, too. So today, what I planned on doing... is um, I because I've been doing the classes, I've got very behind on my client books. And so I have a bunch of old Bibles, and I'm going to have to hold them up so you can't see my bench. And uh, these are client books. And, of course, they've seen better days. So we're going to – I'm going to go through these and assess what needs to be done. Uh, and then start work on them. But today was kind of going to be looking at these books, taking a look at what was wrong with them. And uh, now let's hold this one open. And then discuss the process of how I'm going to go about fixing them with the customer's um, requested requirements. Uh, this one here is going to be one of the first ones I need to get done because it's been here the longest. And uh, it is a large folio um, of Venice. And as you can see, you know, the spine has had better days. I wish this camera would settle down. Um, the spine has had better days. It definitely needs some work. And you can see, but he's got these beautiful plates in it. All right, so I'm going to set this down because I don't want it to get damaged. Um, so we've got these really old books from the 18, early 1800s. Um, and then, you know, I've got a family Bible that needs some work. Uh, this was white at one time, but the household, uh, you can smell it. It's, it's, it reeks of uh, cigarette smoke. Uh, but we're going to be um, doing a new case for this book. Uh, I've got some paper repair to do here and then um, I'm going to strip the spine, reline it. Um, so we'll probably be doing an entire session on this book itself. Um, it's, it's, I don't know, I need to get the alternatives um, on how we're going to do this to the client so they can uh, make a decision on what exactly they'd like me to do. Uh, I have a stack of client books over here. We we're going to touch upon those. Uh, some of them are simple. About that one, I'm not sure what that one is. It's in a bag. I don't want to mess around with the bag today. Uh, ah, so we got this one here. That's going to be a nice, simple repair. Uh, I think it's the inner case it needs work. Uh, yes, looks like. Ah, yeah. Some paper repair. Um, someone shredded some of the paper. So definitely going to require some paper repair. And uh, we'll go from there. And I think is that it? That might be all there is for this one. So I, uh, I just ordered some Hanji because uh, I didn't have any lightweight Hanji. Most of the stuff I have is pretty heavy. I need some lighter Hanji for this particular book. Oh, hey, it's, you motherless goat. All right. <laughs> So I need to figure out, there's got to be a way of setting this camera so it doesn't do all this tracking. Um, but again, it's, it's way over on that side here. Hmm. No, it's not gonna do I was hoping maybe it would give you a full idea of what the room looked like, but yeah, there we go. I get closer to it. 
Okay, so I, I think I'm done messing around. Um, I've given you some updates, and while I wish we were doing more, uh, I was really hoping to sit down and, and talk to you guys about these books, conditions, assessing the repairs, taking a look at my notes of what the client requested versus what's going to be right for the book, and bridging that gap, uh, staying within their budget, but still, a lot of times I end up doing some things that they didn't necessarily request, but the book needed. And it's a little above and beyond the, uh, the call of duty, but that's okay. Um, I, I think for now, uh, because of the, the tech situation, I'm going to let you guys go. I really just wanted to touch base with you and say thank you. Uh, I've, I've been posting some other material other than the live session, so hopefully that keeps you satiated. Uh, if you're watching this as a general population and you haven't pay, you know, joined a paid tier, uh, I'm going to ask you to please do so. You don't have to, not a requirement. There's a free section and there is some stuff in there, but usually the live sessions go to my tier members and then a week later they go public. Um, so you get to see things delayed, uh, but there's programs like the Atelier classes. They're only for the upper tiers and um, the lowest tier is like, it's like the equivalent of buying me a cup of coffee. It's like $3.00 buy me a cup of coffee a month. Uh, the book binder tier is buying me like a mocha a month. And then the, the artist tier, which uh, I really haven't focused on that as much, but I really want to, is like buying me two cups of coffee or two mochas a month. So, and I'm going to have a, another tier, which is going to be basically the patron of the arts. And these are the people that really, that really don't care about the content or the swag as much as supporting the book arts. And, you know, that, that'll be there, but I'm not worried about that. Um, I think, uh, so tomorrow you have the Atelier coming with the Secret Belgian Binding. I think sometime this week, before the week's out, we're going to do another unboxing of some products from uh, Gaylord Archival. And um, I've got some other stuff in the hopper that I hope to present to you. Um, but that's kind of what we've got going on this week. So I was Edward Kranz, Honey Badger Binder of Bookforge. I apologize for the brevity and the lack of actual book binding uh, this particular session. Uh, but thank you for bearing with me, and uh, I hope you have a super fantastical night. Thank you very much.